News with Jack Hicks, meteorologist Jim Arano, Bill Land, and the sports, and Cindy Martin with Action News. Now here's TV10 News and Jack Hicks. Good evening. The United States and France have signed an agreement aimed at ending the long-standing monetary dispute between Washington and Paris over currency exchange rates. Treasury Secretary Simon expressed hope the pact will lead to a 20-nation agreement to monitor currency exchange rates on a daily basis and intervene to stabilize them when necessary. Simon, President Ford, and Secretary of State Kissinger all arrived back in Washington tonight. Kissinger said the monetary agreement is perhaps the most important outcome of the conference. This afternoon, the House Banking Committee voted on a plan to help New York City. The plan will be presented on the House floor tomorrow. Many Republicans don't go along with the plan, a $3 billion loan guarantee with no loan out for more than five years. Members of both parties are concerned. The elections are only a year away. We're progressing, but we haven't gone as far yet where a country legislator with the cries of people back home saying, if you vote to bail out New York, we'll go out and fight you terribly in the next election. We haven't got to Today's that scheduled point, floor debate was delayed one day because Republican leader John Rhodes was out of town, the president was out of town, and supporters of the aid bill want to hear from both. Pro-New York Democrats are angry. They say that New York officials are acting responsibly, that Congress is moving, but that there is no word from the White House. We haven't gotten the first indication, nor have the city, the governor of, of New York, uh, oh, I the, think the, the head of knows. MAC, uh, the head of the control oh. board, they come down here and they present a plan. They go back and they, they implement the plan. They say, we'll meet these conditions. There still is no signal from the White House. There comes a point at which congressional responsibility dictates that we move forward. The House vote tomorrow or Wednesday will be close. In the Senate, members expect a filibuster and maybe defeat. The outlook for aid to New York is shaky. Lawyers for an ex-CIA agent are appealing a federal judge's decision not to temporarily block the release of a Senate Intelligence Committee report about assassination plots against foreign leaders. The 400-page report, due to be released on Thursday, names the CIA man as a central figure in the assassination plots and, according to his lawyers, places his life in danger. The Court of Appeals will hear the arguments tomorrow. The FBI reportedly has conducted massive surveillance of law-abiding American citizens for the past 50 years. That report comes from investigators for the Senate Intelligence Committee. Many of the programs have been exposed previously, but according to investigators, Hearings tomorrow and Wednesday will show the full scope of activities for the Bureau's 67-year history. There were new developments today in the court proceedings of the two women accused of trying to kill President Ford. The judge handling the Lynette Fromm case said today he may declare a mistrial. Defense attorney John Verga said the prosecution concealed information that might have helped Miss Fromm. Verga told Judge Thomas McBride that after Lynette Fromm had been wrestled to the ground, a witness identified as Jim Damer told police he heard Fromm say, it's not loaded anyway, it's not loaded anyway. Damer never testified in court, and his statement wasn't given to the defense until the prosecution rested last Friday. A visibly upset Judge McBride told Prosecutor Donald Heller, I can't understand how you can take it upon yourself to withhold the Damer statement. I ordered you to give all statements that might exonerate Miss Fromm to the defense, and you said you would. Judge McBride told Heller, I'm not going to say right now that you haven't, but I'm plenty worried. Heller said later that the prosecution is relying on an Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling in another case to support the withholding of the Damer statement from the defense. Defense attorney John Verga disagrees. As I argued in court, I feel that, uh, for whatever reason, it was the suppression of evidence. I w certainly would have cross-examined the witnesses differently had I known about that exculpating statement. I think all of you have been present in court. You realize that I don't get the reports until a witness is going to testify. In the other case involving an apparent presidential assassination attempt, Sarah Jane Moore was declared mentally competent to stand trial. Moore shown here leaving her San Francisco jail cell, was described by doctors as mentally alert, rational, and aware of the seriousness of the charges against her. A team of psychiatrists and psychologists reported in federal court that Sarah Jane Moore was competent to stand trial. But psychiatrist William Menninger said her state of mind when the president was shot at is a different matter. This examination, as ordered by the, the court, was strictly with regard to her competency to stay in trial is she essentially you're not supposed to try anybody who is out of it and can't understand and cooperate with the lawyers 
and this examination was strictly for that purpose. After being found competent to stand trial, Ms. Moore pleaded not guilty to charges that she tried to assassinate the president. She'll be tried on those charges December 15th. Patty Hearst's trial on federal bank robbery charges has been postponed from December 15th to January 26th. Ms. Hearst's attorney says the postponement gives them the time they need to prepare their case. The Supreme Court indicated today it will allow some busing of pupils between black inner city schools and predominantly white suburbs. The court upheld without comment a ruling of a three-judge federal court which cleared the way for such busing in the Wilmington, Delaware area. Kansas Attorney General Kurt Schneider was in Wichita today. He was questioned by TV10 News about the report on Kansas nursing homes that was presented to the U.S. Senate Committee on Aging recently. In the report, eight Kansas nursing homes were listed as poor examples. Schneider told us he feels most of the homes in the state are competent. We have, there's no, there are over 300 nursing homes in the state of Kansas. Uh, we made inspections of eight. We picked four that we had received the, the most complaints on, and then we picked four at random. And we reported on those eight inspections. We also inspected the files of 50 other nursing homes uh, without making a, making a physical inspection. We did uh, point out the abuses found in these homes. We uh, were very careful not to uh, indict the nursing home industry, uh, uh, SRS, or Department of Health. What we were trying to do was really kind of give a picture and show one thing, how bad a nursing home could really be in the state of Kansas and still be licensed, still meet the minimum standards for a license. And I think uh, this is what we did, and uh, this is the picture we tried to give to the legislature. The House voted today to increase the monthly premium for Medicare, covering doctor bills from $6.70 to $7.20. This begins next July 1st. The bill, which has now been sent to the Senate, would affect 22 million Medicare recipients who have chosen to enroll in the voluntary coverage. 100 years ago, one of the greatest statesmen of our era was born. Now the world pays tribute to this man, Winston Churchill, with a magnificent gold coin minted for the British Commonwealth Turks and Caicos Islands. Real money that can be redeemed for U.S. currency. This beautiful gold coin is offered at face value without paying any premium by the Fourth National Bank and Trust Company. Available three days only, Wednesday through Friday at all facilities. Also available in sterling silver. Run through a cloud of clover Feel the earth passing by Like a thoroughbred is smiling We have come to realize Run with the strength of a thoroughbred Chevrolet Run The move into the new Wichita City Hall got underway today, and while everything went smoothly, there still were some inconveniences for citizens wanting to do business with the city. Amidst the confusion and chaos of the move to the new building at 455 North Main is a well-organized plan that's apparently working. The actual move began on Saturday and is now operating at full manpower and close to schedule. The phones in the new city building are becoming operational as the departments get settled in. In the meantime, a call to the answering center at 262-0494 should help straighten things out. Among the agencies moving into the new quarters is the police department. With a governor's conference scheduled in Wichita later this week, the communications and records sections are staying in their old quarters to help handle the unusual situation. The police department is closed to walk-in traffic. Chief Floyd Hannon says the best way to get in touch with police is to call the dispatcher at the old number. City spokesmen hope the move will be complete by the end of the week and that the confusion will come to an end. Jim Farney for TV10 News. Nine months ago, a private twin-engine plane loaded with 2,300 pounds of high-grade Mexican marijuana made a forced landing near Wichita. The pilot couldn't be located. An investigation by the Sedgwick County Sheriff's Office and Assistant District Attorney Stephen Joseph revealed the apparent existence of an international smuggling operation. So far, there have been no arrests, but a break in the case, they say, may be coming soon. $100,000 worth of high-grade Mexican marijuana was found packed from floor to ceiling in the plane. The craft had been based in a hangar at the Newton City County Airport, and the person leasing the plane was believed to have been living in a West Side apartment in Wichita. The investigation has revealed some interesting facts which have led officers to believe the plane was part of a very large international smuggling operation. Its roots may be in the Boston area, although many other cities have been checked during the nine-month investigation. The airplane has been released from the custody of the sheriff's office. The marijuana is still in custody. 
Today, Assistant District Attorney Stephen Joseph told TV10 News that two out-of-state trips have been made in the past 30 days, resulting in some very good breaks in the case. Joseph said one more out-of-state trip is planned for the very near future, which should put the case in the final stage of the investigation. Charles Duncan for TV10 News. A recently concluded four-and-a-half-year study has led researchers to report that a low-cholesterol diet was of no significant help in preventing heart disease. However, one of the researchers still says low-fat diets may lessen the risk of heart disease over a lifetime. The researcher also said that one age group, that being men under 50 years of age, did benefit from the special diet. We'll have a report on what's coming up in the wonderful world of weather from Jim O'Donnell in just a moment. Now there's a successful, safe way to firm shape and beautify your figure without dieting. It's the amazing Body Slimmer Exerciser used by doctors, models, and athletes who want to firm and shape their figures fast. Just five minutes and one simple exercise twice daily helps you get rid of lumps, bumps, and ugly bulges just where you need it. Around your waist, hips, legs, and thighs helping you to look your shapelier. Scientifically designed to combine the action of your arms and legs, thereby firming your figure in one movement, allowing you to exercise pleasantly for only $5.98. You can instantly start firming, shaping, invigorating, and beautifying your figure in the privacy of your own room. Here's how to order. For speedy delivery, simply call our toll-free number, 1-800-228-1776. That's 1-800-228-1776. When your body slimmer arrives, you pay just $5.98 plus COD postage, or save COD postage, send $5.98 to Body Slimmer, 104 South Broadway, Wichita. That's Body Slimmer, 104 South Broadway, Wichita, Kansas. Jim O'Donnell's TV 10 Weather is brought to you by the Union National Bank, the bank for all seasons. So, our chances of rain. You're not supposed to come on smiling if the people don't know what you're smiling at. Oh, well, if we were... You want to show... Go ahead and show them what you're smiling yeah, it's, at. Yeah, it's late. Yeah. We, we were joking. Well, now we can't show them. Oh. Uh, anyway, we were using little, little circular things at quarter, you know, 25, 26 minutes after 11 to uh, make us all look like little orphan Annie. We were going to do it on the air, but the director turned us off. <laughs> things like that happen at this time of night. We had uh, quite cool temperatures way off in the northwest with a national low about nine and of course the high this afternoon was quite warm out in the west we have readings over kansas that were very pleasant today however we are looking for a new front to begin to drift south and eastward the central and eastern parts of kansas will very probably be cloudy in the morning and then western kansas will begin to get increasing cloudiness by tomorrow afternoon today however very very pleasant reading 73 up in the goodland area 72 at garden city 70 reported by dodge city and liberal 72 also over by the good folks at guyman and in the Ponca City Blackwell area, 68 degrees today, around Hutchinson, 63 to 65. In Wichita, the early morning low is 46 and the high this afternoon, about 65 degrees. Consin continued southerly wind flow should bring some moisture back into the state for tomorrow, so we'll look for generally cloudy skies again. However, partly cloudy to cloudy conditions now. Temperature 58 degrees, humidity is around 83%, pretty high for this time. Winds southerly at about 15 with gusts to 25 miles an hour. The barometric pressure 30.00 and is rising. And no precipitation, we're about a half inch behind, correction, a half inch ahead for the year and one and 53 hundredths behind for the, for the year so far. We'll be looking for a little bit of a change tomorrow and of course the possibility of some scattered showers. Today, of course, there's nothing showing up on the radar. However, the satellite photo was pretty interesting for the western half of the U.S. The rain showers and thunder showers along that frontal system and that wide band of fairly heavy snows. Now, what will happen each time that you see the frontal system on there, that begins at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then you'll see the cloud pattern move until 2 o'clock this afternoon. So as of that time, of course, the front was way off in the northwest. Now, however, it's moving into the central part of the nation with a couple of high pressure cells behind it and a few pockets of low pressure and a fairly heavy band of rain showers and snow all the way from the eastern portions of Montana down to western sections of Nevada and of course the massive high picking up warm moist air from the south bringing it northward so when the two masses collide over Kansas we are looking for some precipitation and we'll talk about that in a moment. Need a reason to open a checking account at Union National Bank? Yes. Well, how about convenience? Union National Bank has four handy locations, downtown, uptown, east and west side, open to serve you almost all of the time, even before and after work, if you like. Is this reason enough? Nope. Well, what if you save a couple of dollars this month in service charges? Would that do it? No. Well, then what if you save a couple more dollars next month in service charges? How about that? 
No, but you're getting close. Well, then, what if you save two or three dollars or more in service charges this month and next month and the month after that and every month from now on? Then would you open a free checking account at Union National Bank? Yes, I believe I would. Well, good, because you will save several dollars a month every month in service charges with a free personal or business checking account available only at Union National Bank. Open your free checking account right away at the bank for all seasons. Okay, I will. Well, for the first time in a long time, especially for southwestern Kansas, we have some rain in the forecast, partly cloudy conditions for tonight. However, increasing cloudiness tomorrow, of course, with the cloudiness, slightly cooler temperatures. A chance of showers beginning late tomorrow afternoon through early Wednesday. Low tonight should be about 42 and tomorrow's high around 59 degrees, with southerly winds continuing for most of tonight through tomorrow and, of course, switching to northerly after that front moves through. For Wichita, too, we're looking for pretty much the same type forecast, partly cloudy to cloudy tonight through tomorrow, with uh, cooler temperatures forecast for tomorrow and, of course, scattered showers possibly becoming isolated thunder showers late tomorrow night and early Wednesday morning. Low tonight should be about 50 and tomorrow's high 60, and, of course, the temperature will drop considerably on Wednesday. The five-day outlook shows that we have some partly cloudy conditions, of course, tomorrow, then scattered showers on Wednesday morning becoming cloudy Wednesday afternoon, mostly cloudy on Thursday. On Friday, sunny. The high on, on Thursday should be about 56 on Friday, 58 degrees, and then partly cloudy skies with 57 for Saturday. And, of course, our 30-day outlook for temperature really doesn't show too much over the nation. What we have is um, just about normal temperatures for the Wichita area westward, a little pocket of very, very cold air. This is from now until the 15th of December, with uh, the extreme northwestern corner of the nation being below normal, the entire eastern half of the U.S. above normal, and, of course, from Wichita westward, to Southern California, generally normal conditions, and of course around Wichita, our average should be around 42 degrees. And that's the weather for tonight. Jim O'Donnell's TV 10 weather was brought to you by the Union National Bank, the bank for all seasons. Jim O'Donnell's weathercast bear the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval. McConnell Air Force Base is still behind in paying its water bill to the city of Wichita. The problem is the Air Force has refused to pay the increase in rates, which has taken effect recently. At a news conference today, Water Department Director John Weinkoop said he's confident the problem will soon be worked out. TV 10 News asked Weinkoop if he thought the city would be as tolerant if a private firm fell behind in its water payments. Has some audio problems there, obviously. Some in substance of it all, as Weinkoop said, of course, everything's going to be taken care of with McConnell, and the city always tries to go along with any industry that would be having difficulty wherever they felt as though they could. Okay, shall we go ahead to Action News now? Okay. Action News has solved the problem of getting a set of luggage to match, and here's Cindy Martin to tell us about it. Tonight's viewer wrote that she was dumping her problem into our lap because she was tired and disgusted with the whole situation. She said in January she ordered a three-piece luggage set and shaving kit for her grandson's graduation. In March, the large case arrived. In April, she received the shaving kit, which did not match the case, and so she sent it back. Two long-distance phone calls, three letters, and one incomplete graduation gift later, our viewer still had no response from the company as to whether expect the merchandise or a refund. We explained the problem to the company, and they said there had been a mix-up, which was now corrected, and our viewer would receive a new complete set. We'll be glad to pack away your problem, or at least try to. All you have to do is write to us at Action News, Box 10 in Wichita. Now, moving right along to Bill Landon Sports. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm in a little bit of funny humor tonight. I guess at this time of night, I always get this way. You have to be with me. <laughs> Can you accept that? I'll stay with O'Donnell as bad as that choice may be. <laughs> okay. Okay. You have him. <laughs> Officials of the Sun Bowl have offered an invitation to the winner of the Missouri-Kansas game to be played Saturday at Lawrence. Both teams are 6-3 and three for the season. Pittsburgh has already accepted a bid to that game to be played on December 26th in El Paso, Texas. The Jayhawks' Bud Moore said tonight that he was pleased with the bowl possibility, but that it would make it difficult to concentrate on the game with Missouri. Sugar Bowl officials made it official today that Alabama and Penn State will meet in their game on New Year's Eve. 
That leaves the loser of the Big 8 showdown between Oklahoma and Nebraska without a shot at a major bowl. The Fiesta Bowls invited the loser of Saturday's game, but Oklahoma has voted to accept that if they lose, while Nebraska, on the other hand, has voted by a 3-1 to one count to turn down the offer, wanting the Orange Bowl or nothing else. In the National Football League tonight, the Buffalo Bills took it on the chin from the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Here's a look at that contest. First quarter, no scores. Cincinnati's Ken Anderson rolls out and fires to Lenville Elliott in the end zone for the touchdown. The point after his missed, the Bengals lead 6-0. When Buffalo got the ball, O.J. Simpson got the call. Here, he reeled off a great run, even falling down at one point. Then getting up and adding more yardage, Simpson had one of the greatest nights of his career. The game developed into a duel between Simpson's runs and Anderson's passes. Watch Anderson hide the ball here, taking plenty of time to throw, and then hitting Isaac Curtis. Three plays later, Stan Fritz lugged the ball in to give Cincinnati a 13-3 lead. But the Bills got that back right away, Simpson taking it in to make the score 13-10. Before the half ended, Anderson found Charlie Joyner all alone deep in Buffalo territory, hit him for the touchdown. The final score wound up Cincinnati 33, Buffalo 24. The Kansas City Chiefs have lost starters Tom Condon and Bob Maddox for the remainder of the season. Maddox, a defensive lineman, is out with ligament damage in his right knee, and Condon, offensive guard, is also out with knee damage. Back with more after this. Get this Kodak Hawkeye Instamatic color camera outfit, or from Portugal, your choice of selected handcrafted silver pieces free with a deposit of $5,000 or more in a new or existing account at American. Deposit $50 or more and purchase the Kodak Instamatic with Magic Cube, color film, wrist strap, and extender for just $9.95. See the many lovely gifts available now for saving at American. American Savings. With the football season over for Wichita State, Coach Jim Wright and his staff are concentrating on recruiting now. I asked Coach Wright what he's looking for. Well, Bill, right now I think we need to try to get around six to eight junior college players to come in and, and certainly uh, compete for a first-team position and, and really give us uh, help quick, and that's uh, by going through our winter workout program and being with us during spring practice. And then I think we definitely need to get... Uh, uh, a lot more speed at our skill positions. We, we need to get some people that uh, uh, certainly beat us, uh, that, that, that have the speed, like people that have beaten us this year in our three or four games that we lost, where I thought we certainly were close, and uh, get some people that can run that 9-5 or 9-6 and uh, come up with some more bigger plays by people at the skill position, of course, getting a few more people in your up front, either offense or defense, that are a little bit quicker. Uh, we certainly are looking for players like this, but we certainly do not in any way want to, uh, where I, we feel like we're not uh, uh, having confidence in our players that will be returning, because we certainly do. The New Orleans Jazz Pete Maravich will be out for two to four weeks with a shoulder injury. Maravich separated the shoulder going for a loose ball in practice today as another player landed on the shoulder. Pistol Pete has been averaging 23 points a game so far this season. Virginia Squires of the ABA have delayed announcement that they will become the third team to fold in the league this year. The Squires have not paid their players their last paycheck, but general manager Jack Anderson says the team is near completing a package deal which would allow the franchise to finish the season. A new news conference is planned for tomorrow. And in baseball news tonight, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Atlanta Braves have traded center fielders. The Dodgers sent Jim Wynn to Atlanta in exchange for Dusty Baker. Also moving from L.A. to Atlanta are reserve outfielder Tom Pachorek and infielders Lee Lacey and Jerry Royster. Atlanta sent first baseman Ed Goodson to the Dodgers to complete the deal. That's a look at sports. Jack? And that's TV10's News. Good night. <laughs>